Hi, my name is Matthias Willich, and today I'll talk to you about how to stay motivated in science. How to stay motivated in science, you ask? Of course I'm motivated. This is the most awesome thing in the world, after all, and that's true. However, either you have already experienced some dips in motivation, or more likely than not, you will experience them in the future. I have. And I'll share with you a little sort of mental trick, if you will, that I found helped me and maybe it'll also help you. So here is the problem, as it unfolded for myself anyway. Um, I got into my field ecology because of the love of the big questions. Uh, why are there so many organisms there? What do they do? Um, how is it structurally organized and so on and so forth. So those are the, the questions that we find exciting, the, the, the really big questions that draw us into science. And I think it's important to have uh, one of those big questions to, to pursue for the long run, because I think they are motivating in and of themselves, of course. This is an important aspect of motivation. It's like pursue an important question that you really believe in. So, but this is what happens. So you have this wonderful big question that you're really excited about. And when you think about it, now you want to work on that question. What you will discover sooner or later is that in order to get at that question, well, you cannot directly answer that question. You need to take that question and um, divide it into sort of bite-sized pieces. You need to break that question down into um, questions that can be directly worked on. For example, in an experiment or in an observational study or with a data synthesis, whatever the case may be, inevitably you will not be able to work on that amazingly big question that drew you in in the first place, but you have to break it down into smaller bits and pieces that you then work on. So now this is what happens. When you then look at one of those smaller bits and pieces that you have just derived from the bigger question, then now you have to work on this. And the problem is, of course, that little question that you had to derive, that that smaller subset of the bigger question, is inherently less interesting, of course, than the big question. And now you see how much work you have to do, how many hundreds of samples you have to process in the lab, or how many samples you have to take in the field, and the many, many, many hours of labor or processing data or whatever have you. And so this is the, the incredibly de demotivating aspect of this. You see this mismatch between that question that is a small subset of the awesome question that you're really after, and the immense amount of effort you would have to put in to even address that small subset of a question. And if you compare these things at, at face value, if you, you know, if you mentally add up all the work that you would have to do in order to, to um, go ahead and answer that one question, that can be incredibly demotivating, I find. So it's like, oh no, I have to do all this stuff and then all I get to answer is like this little tiny bit of a question, say like a chapter of your PhD or if your master's degree or even later on a bit of a project or something. It just seems completely unreasonable and totally out of whack and um, it can be incredibly demoralizing and, and demotivating. And so here is what you really need to do is for every one of the situations, you cannot compare directly this immense amount of effort that you have to invest with the small, relatively small question that you can address with that effort. But you have to always complete that loop and think about the, the big question that you were after in the first place. And you have to understand that sub-question as you know, a step on the way to really getting at that bigger question. Because then that effort 
um, ratio doesn't seem to be so completely out of whack because you have in mind in your mental image or you, you adjust your mental image to not just focus on this one question but to understand that this in fact really was a part of that bigger question that you found, find incredibly exciting. And I think that's this tip. I think um, first of all have an exciting question, a really important question, maybe also a question that um, is relevant to society um, that you would feel excited about sharing it with other people. And these questions are very difficult, I think, to find. And, um, and then it's also another piece of art, basically, to break it down into, into practicable bits, as we, we talked about. But then the second bit is to keep in mind um, when you are faced with the day-to-day -day effort of tackling some of these questions, which can be incredibly daunting, very repetitive, and um, yeah, can be derailing you if you're not careful. Um, keep in mind how they are all connected to the bigger question. And I think that will definitely help. Oh, that video was something, huh? So if you liked it, don't forget to hit like. And remember to subscribe to this channel. See ya.